Mike here. Uh, now for something completely different. What we got here is uh, what I hope to be a refrigerant injector uh, or ejector or jet pump. Refrigerant jet pump is also a common term for this. Um, this might just be a hunk of brass and copper and doesn't do anything else, but uh, my intention with this is to actually create a, uh, a uh, essentially a two-stage compression system. Um, Okay, so what we have here um, is a system by which high-pressure liquid refrigerant is fed from the condenser normally, as it would to the, the uh, evaporator, but instead of it getting sent directly to the evaporator, some of the uh, uh, pressure component of the, um, um, the, the, the enthalpy of the, the refrigerant. So uh, the refrigerant has a, uh, a heat content, um, you know, what we normally just consider as like the temperature of it, um, but then also has the pressure component. Um, which is dependent on the specific volume of it. In a normal system, after the expansion valve, um, pretty much all of that pressure component is lost. You go from a high pressure system to a low pressure system, um, and that, that, uh, that high pressure is restricted through uh, a valve, expansion valve, a throttle of some sort, and um, once it exits the uh, expansion valve, the pressure component gets converted into kinetic energy, uh, high velocity. Um, so that refrigerant, um, liquid with some flash gas comes through there at a very very high velocity in a normal normal system that velocity that kinetic energy uh, turns into uh, into heat uh, because the uh, the the, um, the kinetic energy is lost in turbulence and and is and produces flash gas so um, essentially you know we, we lose that it's it's not isentropic expansion it's uh, it's usually uh, isenthalpic, but it's not isentropic. Um, so what I want to do here is actually use some of that energy to do some, uh, some pumping or some uh, actual uh, uh, suction on the evaporator itself. So the result of this is you have high pressure actually entering the expansion valve, you have low pressure, relatively speaking, in the uh, evaporator, and what exits the, this is a combination of both of these uh, vapors and liquids at a medium pressure somewhere in between. So, let me show you here. It's just compression fitting. We have uh, the first expansion valve, which is my main control, and then we have a fixed orifice, which is this tip here. It's a capillary tube actually brazed into a quarter inch, which is brazed into a three-eighths inch. And that, probably can't see too well. You can see a hole down there. That actually injects right down into the throat of this um, sort of a Venturi device, except we have a long throat. Okay, so that high pressure comes uh, through that that um, uh, that second restriction uh, at a high velocity. It exits at a low pressure because uh, as pressure drops, the uh, velocity increases for continuity and for conservation of energy, what have you. Um, comes shooting through this. Uh, central tube here and then exits out through. Now once it actually exits the, uh, the secondary, um, the, the primary nozzle, which is what I showed you there, that, that, that primary nozzle, and primary motive nozzle, um, it's at a low pressure which creates a slight vacuum. Uh, that pressure is actually lower than the evaporator. Uh, gases and or liquid are actually drawn uh, to the inside of this half inch pipe but to the outside of that 3 eighths pipe. Um, drawn down, picks up speed down through here and actually uh, mixes with the uh, primary mode of fluid down through this quarter inch line here. Uh, kinetic energy is lost by the uh, primary mode of fluid and picked up by the secondary fluid. They mix down through here, gaining speed. Eventually the velocity peaks and the cross-sectional area increases in this, this divergent nozzle where the velocity starts to decrease with the mixture and uh, the pressure increases where it finally exits out of this half inch pipe and into a uh, separator where liquid is separated sent back through in to pick up heat in the evaporator and to make that cycle again and again and again. Any vapor that's actually discharged into a, a, a column or a, a reservoir down here is picked up at the top, that vapor is sent back to the compressor to be recompressed, heat is uh, rejected from it in the condenser where it finally comes back subcooled through the expansion valve. So it's actually uh, two, two, two systems 
um, two two refrigerant loops in in one system uh, with one compressor. Um, the reason I started to do this, I was I'm actually just going to be building a uh, uh, air conditioner here in the shop, um, gutting some other components and creating kind of a split system. I was trying to figure out how to plumb this uh, easily. I'm trying to avoid using caps. My uh, separator column is going to be one inch pipe and uh, without having to use caps and drill a lot of excess holes, I'm going to use kind of this method here. It's a little easier to braise, probably a little bit stronger, and um, decided that, you know, <clears throat> the um, saturated liquid vapor combination coming in from the expansion valve and the saturated uh, liquid vapor combination coming from the evaporator can kind of be combined into one pipe. So I just decided, well, what the hell, I'll build an, eject an ejector. Uh, so a bit of a steep learning curve on trying to uh, build this. I started with 3 8 pipe because 3 8 was going to be my uh, smallest diameter. It's quarter inch now. Tried to actually blow that open with a swaging mandrel. It didn't really work too well. That was a little bit better, but couldn't get it out of the drill chuck. I tried to put it in the drill chuck and actually push it onto a mandrel in the vise, and it worked. I mean, you can see it's actually wider up there. Um, <clears throat> but I couldn't get it out. I mean, it's not a good method. Uh, that was in a drill press at work. It started to work, then it started to slip down there. Junk. Quarter inch. Opened up a little bit, but, you know, kind of blew it out there at the bottom. Junk. Uh, this is a piece of half-inch pipe. Decided I was going to try to start with a larger diameter and narrow it. Uh, this was pulled by a porta power, hydraulic porta power, and then heated in the center with a brazing torch. Um, started to work, started to thin out quite a bit. I was getting a little excited about that. Then the copper got so thin that it snapped. Junk. Finally switched to another method. Uh, there's a guy on uh, online, I think he does uh, biodiesel, uh, demonstrated a method of, I think his name's Graham Laming. Not quite sure. Um, but uh, I was impressed by his method. It's uh, a little tedious, takes a while. Uh, taking a piece of half-inch pipe, heating it up to a kneeling temperature to soften it, and then beating on it with something heavy. In my case, I used a, um, a pretty heavy brass punch, and then uh, as it would get hard, I would reheat it and keep working it uh, over the edge of a um, the head of a hammer. Uh, that's what he used. That's what I used, too. It seemed to work all right. Um, so this was a moderate success. I was pretty happy with it, but it um, wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So I moved on, actually tried it again. In this case, I actually tried to use a tapered punch in the end as a form and got a little happy and started beating on it up here before I worked it up that way. I ended up with some lumps here that I couldn't get out. But uh, then I focused on this area here. It seemed to turn out okay, but um, not that happy with the, uh, the internal uh, roughness of the, the, the inside. So it seemed like that that method it, it, it may work for some some things. I mean, if you wanted to, in case of uh, like biodiesel, you want to mix <clears throat> methanol with uh, whatever solution. I'm not exactly sure what the process is, but um, that seemed to be the method they were using to actually create some low pressure and and, and use the uh, the pumping fluid to actually do some some suction. Uh, here's a half inch cap that I blew out with a uh, the five eighth inch bolt. Uh, so that was actually going to be my convergent nozzle. This one was just kind of a test there. Uh, the divergent nozzle, I ended up taking a piece of uh, paper that I cut out in the shape of a triangle. Uh, once I kind of figured out what the dimensions for the cone were going to be, try to get the angle I'm looking for. Uh, I wanted about 12 degrees. This one's about a little bit closer to 16 degrees. But you can see that I wrapped it around a piece of pipe and then cut it with a Dremel, heated it up to... Uh, to soften it and anneal it and uh, then closed it in. It's actually surprisingly easy to get a nice even cone. Um, and even for the most part, if you get rid of some of this tip here, that can be very difficult to, to roll. Um, you can do most of it by hand. Uh, a pair of gloves, just working on it and squeezing it. Closes in pretty good and then finish it off um, on some kind of like a, I put a round punch in the vise and laid this on it and then used the hammer to kind of finish closing it in. Um, and then braise the seam up, which is which is what this one is. <clears throat> of course, that's a half inch copper cap there, blown out method I described previously, and then drilled, um, and then quarter inch tubing there. I could have almost just finished off and went with this one here, uh, but I decided to go with one more. Uh, there's some things about this that are actually better than the latest one I made, but um, uh, I think it, it should it should work all right. Um, so I made a little diagram here, to try to explain 
what the process is that's going on here. <clears throat> so we have this, uh, kind of use this one as a, actually no, we'll use this one. So um, in this region here, the half inch pipe that actually uh, comprises the, uh, you know, the sort of the intake, the, the low pressure side of the system. Um, we have a uh, uh, high pressure motor fluid actually injecting down through the center right into the throat. Uh, creates low pressure, which uh, actually draws uh, refrigerant from the, uh, the, the, the evaporator itself. And then there's this mixing region where the uh, kinetic energy of this uh, high pressure, the motor fluid, is lost and given up to the lower pressure. And what exits is a, <clears throat> is a medium pressure uh, condition. So here's a basic layout of, a, of what uh, an ejector system might look like. We have a compressor, condenser, evaporator, uh, expansion valves. There's actually two of them in this case. Um, we have a high pressure uh, uh, vapor actually being discharged into the condenser normally. Um, heat is lost, the refrigerant condenses, forms a subcooled liquid. It's fed into an expansion valve, driven into the ejector. Normally it would be driven directly into the evaporator. In this case, it's driven into the ejector uh, at high velocity as it exits the, uh, the, uh, the orifice into the uh, throat. Low pressure creates a draw, which draws refrigerant, or, excuse me, draws vapor off the evaporator. Um, it's mixed. Uh, kinetic energy is lost from the, uh, the motive fluid to the secondary fluid. It... Um, Increases in pressure here in the divergent nozzle. The liquid and uh, vapor combination at a medium pressure is discharged into a reservoir. Liquid, of course, falls to the bottom. That liquid can be drawn off and sent back to the uh, evaporator to do more cooling work. Um, this is a, actually a second expansion valve, considering that this is at a low pressure condition and the separator is actually at a medium pressure condition. So in order to have a little bit of a pressure difference there, you almost have to have some sort of a restriction. Um, and, uh, uh, so, and, and, and any vapor that's actually um, uh, uh, left in the, in the separator is drawn back to the compressor normally and uh, c compressed to discharge the heat. Um, in my case, I originally just wanted to um, create some uh, pumping action to actually pump refrigerant through the uh, heat exchanger coils as rapidly as I can uh, in order to, um, uh, because this is actually going to be m mostly a flooded system, uh, any vapor that's formed in here needs to get out as quickly as I can and so that the uh, inside surface of the copper tubing can be re-wetted to absorb more heat. Um, what I may find is that the ejector doesn't work all that well if there's an excessive amount of liquid actually being pumped through it. Um, and I might also find there's a point of diminishing returns with the amount of pumping I can get through there, in which case I'm actually going to put a ball valve down here. Not a, not a really a very high restricting valve, but something I can leave wide open if that's uh, the way the thing seems to work best, or I can kind of close it down a little bit. And if I close it down, um, the amount of, of uh, refrigerant actually pumping through here, uh, or at least the velocity of it, may may decrease, um, um, and I may get a little bit of a, uh, flash gas actually formed in here, forming more of a dry evaporator. Um, that, that's, I'll have to wait to see what happens with that, um, in which case I might create another separator column or something. I, I'm not exactly sure yet, but this is the basic layout of the system that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use right now, um, just to see if the damn thing works. Um, I also designed this in such a way that uh, there's compression fitting on the back that allows me to take this modem nozzle out. I'd like to be able to actually adjust how deep into the throat it is, but um, pretty much once you crank this thing down, that uh, that ferrule there in the compression fitting has pretty well set itself into the copper. Um, so maybe at some point, if this, I have moderate success with this, I can make different uh, uh, modem nozzles with different orifices at the tip, of course, but I can also uh, create a system where I can put some packing material or something in there that would actually allow me to loosen this if the system is, you know, um, uh, evacuated, of course, you know. Uh, I don't want any refrigerant in there coming shooting out. Um, but that'll allow me to actually adjust the depth of the, uh, the primary nozzle in there. Um, so, overall, it was 
pretty successful. Wait and see. Uh, this refocus you damn thing. Um, this brass sweated fitting here, it uh, looks like hell. Had a hell of a time trying to braze that to the copper. Um, I'm sure some of these experience with this would do a much, much nicer job, but um, that was my first experience trying to braze to brass. Um, so in the future I'll probably practice that a little bit more, but I think it should seal. So I haven't done a pressure test on the thing yet, but um, I'm going to probably move on with the rest of the system and start working on the, some plumbing and the, uh, the coil itself. So, thanks for watching.